will Georgia have Carson Beck as its quarterback for that tough 2024 run? What's the deal with number 15? Mark Schlebaugh has Beck on his two early list of Heisman hopefuls for 2024. I believe it's too early for the two earlies myself, but let's get into it. In the SEC of Schlebaugh's list, you got Milrow, you got Quinn Ewers, you got Beck, you got Jackson Dart, and Missouri wide receiver Luther Burden. Um, I said it before the SEC championship game, Jalen Milrow's a freak, and Georgia needed to uh, respect him and not just assume he was a running back who threw the ball every once in a while. I think he's got a really shot to win, a good shot to win the Heisman because I think Alabama could be even better next season than it is this year. And in theory, Milrow will continue to improve as he did to end this season. So that's a no-brainer. Let's keep going around the league. Ewers, Quinn Ewers also in that boat. Texas is on the way up, recruiting well. They will portal well. Uh, I love portal as a verb. They're going to portal well. And I uh, think that Quinn Ewers could be in New York too. Maybe Jackson Dart is a guy like Jaden Daniels this year. You know, maybe Ole Miss is a team that hits its head on the Georgia, Bama, Texas ceiling, but the Rebs still put up numbers and, and Dart still puts up numbers and makes it to New York. Luther Burden is really going to have to... Uh, let me fix my mic here. Luther Burden's really going to have to elevate, I think. Just being a wide receiver, you got to have a really special season. And then there's Carson Beck. Carson Beck could still go to the NFL. It is a stacked quarterback class. Drake May, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix. Uh, they're all going to be there. So for, uh, for Beck, it seems like a cut and dry decision. For him to come back and maybe prove a little bit more in uh, 2024 but it's clearly not that easy because if it were beck would have already decided one way or another right at least we know what his decision is um here's what beck has the opportunity to prove if he does come back he's going to go through a tougher schedule he's going to be able to prove theoretically that he's still the top dog that he proved himself to be this season for georgia and he could make himself a no-doubter first-round quarterback. Maybe not the first overall, but who knows? I mean, you have a special season against that schedule, you can you can prove some things. Um, against Bama, like I mentioned, he didn't look quite as sharp. No one on Georgia's team looked as good as they did all year against Alabama, and some of that was Georgia self-inflicted, but a lot of that was Bama earning that. He did it with Brock Bowers, Mad Mc Lad McConkey on the field. Yeah, they were banged up, but those guys were there, and he still seemed out of sorts with Bama getting after him. George's O-line was a Joe Moore finalist, and now his center, Cedric Van Pran, will be gone. So here's some reasons why this might not be an easy decision for Beck to come back. Amarius Mims will be gone. Tate Ratledge may or may not be back. Georgia's done a great job of developing its offensive line through the years. I'm not saying they're going to take a huge drop off, but without Bowers, maybe without McConkey, some Georgia fans are holding out hope that McConkey might come back. You've got a little bit of an unknown at the offensive line. You've got some unknowns at your skill players, at your targets. You're not going to have Bowers. Maybe you still uh, have have Love it and and. Uh, Ra Ra Thomas continuing to elevate their game. I don't think either one of them is a sure bet to go. Um, so you'll still have targets. You'll still have weapons. George's running back position needs to get a lot better, for sure. But ultimately, I, I understand why Beck is deliberating here. There's been some NIL numbers floated around, kicked around there that indicate that Beck could be trying to drive up his NIL bargain a little bit and and get a better deal to come back to Georgia. But if he thinks that he wants to bet on himself and see that, hey, what I did this year was really good, and 
I only had two games where I threw for fewer than 250 yards against Bama. It was 243 and one season as a starter. Hey, I feel pretty good about myself. I'm going to go and then I'll have the opportunity to prove it in the NFL instead of having to prove it at Georgia one more year, take a, a risk of getting hurt behind a offensive line that's trying to figure things out. You're holding on to the ball a little bit longer with new skill players and new targets that aren't as in sync as you were with Bowers and McConkie. I mean, I get it. I understand why Beck has a big decision to make here. And just because there are a lot of other good quarterbacks coming out doesn't mean that Beck feels like he can't stack up with them. That's the best trait you can have in a quarterback is that confidence. And Beck's got it. So why would he not think about going? Um, some assume that you know Brock Vandergriff's decision to transfer to Kentucky, that it was an indicator that Beck was definitely coming back. Doesn't look like that's the case. Um, Beck had a chance to show that he was really, really good, and he could go. And if you're Georgia, you're like, oh crap, what are we going to do? Who's going to be? Who, who will our quarterback be? Is there anybody going to be left in the portal if Beck does go? Do we just go ahead and give the keys to Gunnar Stockton? Which I don't think is a bad idea, personally. Here's what you do stand to gain, though. If you're Beck, I'm not saying that I, uh, I know what he should do or what he will do. But you'll have a chance to go up against a really tough slate of teams next year. Not just in the SEC. More high-profile games, like that opener against Clemson in Atlanta. And you can show that you are a, no doubt, open and shut, first-round NFL draft prospect, and maybe you buck that Heisman Trophy trend, too. Before we go, I invite y'all to hit like and subscribe on this channel as I uh, continue to pontificate about my thoughts in the greatest conference, in the greatest sport that there is. I know it's tough to believe that these days. Things are grim, right? You don't believe in the sanctity of the college football playoff. You don't believe in uh, the transfer portal. You don't like how NIL's going. Well, speaking of the portal, I just want to have a, a little bit of levity here on the show and share some uh, personal news from the portal myself. This past weekend, I hit the portal and transferred from Sam's Club to Costco. And I'd like to read my statement here that I've prepared. First and foremost, I would like to thank the Sam's Club members and staff for their discounts and our memories together. Without you, I wouldn't have accomplished my goals of a perfect reverse sear USDA prime ribeye, an industrial-sized jar of Duke's mayonnaise that I'm nervous to check the date on, and all of the cheese party trays I ate standing at the refrigerator in my underwear. With that being said, and after much consideration and prayer with my family, I would like to announce my entry into the transfer portal and commitment to Costco. I'm fired up to join this elite roster of samples, Kirkland's signature golf balls, and all of our legendary affordable hot dogs. Costco country, I'm home. <laughs>